like one percent, maybe five, probably yeah. a max of five. Yeah. And a nodule, a little, little electrolyte. Those do not dissociate at all. There is no dissociation when they dissolve. Let's now, go a couple examples of these. Yeah. No, real quick. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, the reason we call them electrolytes is um, we can actually measure this with a conductivity meter, yes. and usually that's done. Um, with a little uh, thing that has some electrical probes at the end and a light bulb on it. And we're going to do that as a demo in class. So you might want to just leave some space here. And um, I thought we had a picture. I thought we did too, and I don't see that picture anywhere. I may have not got it copied over. It but we're going to demonstrate this for you in class. We'll get some strong electrolytes, weak electrolytes, yeah. and non-electrolytes out. So just, just keep that in a mind. Quick note, a way to write them when you're writing a strong electrolyte, Just a very important, for example, salt, sodium chloride, is a strong electrolyte. And if I take solid sodium chloride and I write an arrow, then it breaks apart into its ions, Na positive, it's aqueous, plus chloride minus aqueous. Now, the key thing I want you to take a, a look at is the arrow. The arrow is a one-directional arrow. That means it completely dissociates. This is the high school romance. There's the boy and the girl, and there's the boy, and there's the girl, because they always break up at 100%, all of them. I know you have exceptions in your family. Okay, guys. <laughs> but <laughs> They're not very many. There's not very many. No, and not me personally. Family. If I have a weak electrolyte, I'm abbreviating. Hopefully, you can figure that out. Uh, an example of that might be what? Uh, acetic acid. Acetic acid, that's perfect. H-C-2-H-3-O-2, acetate connected to hydrogen. And notice I'm now going to draw a double arrow. I'll do the, the chemist's lazy arrow. And that breaks apart into H's and acetates. And they're actually both aqueous, but I'm going to be lazy. But notice the key thing to pay attention to here is instead of a single arrow, it's a double arrow. So here you have some, um, some chemicals that break apart, about 1%, going this direction, but then some also reform. So it's kind of a constant, we call it system of equilibrium. Yep. We'll talk more about that when we get to our equilibrium unit. Oh, and then a, a last one, we do a non-electrolyte. A good example of that would be, say, sugar, C6H12O6. That's actually glucose. And then you put that into water and you have solid, and it just turns into C6H12O6 aqueous. It dissolves because right. it is polar. Completely dissolves. So what happens is you've got this salt crystal, which is, you know... Sugar. Or sorry, sugar crystal, and there's millions and millions of these sugar molecules. What they do is they split up to, into individual sugar molecules, but the individual molecule still stays intact. So it dissolves into individual molecules, but the individual molecules do not split up at all. Yeah, so it does not dissociate or split up. Dissociate means breaking apart into ions. Okay, now we're going to uh, change gears and talk about solution concentration. So what are we going to do here? All right. Um, there's quite a few ways we can determine concentration, but the primary one we're going to use in chemistry is molarity. And molarity is defined as? Moles of our solute per liter of solution. Now, that's important because later on we're going to talk about something called molality, which is different. We're not going to talk about that now, but just know that it's moles of solute per liters of total solution. Yeah. Okay. And then a helpful equation, if you take the molarity times the volume, this makes life so much easier, guys, yeah. down the road, is this equals the number of moles. Yep. You know, this is such an important equation. You're going to memorize it, but if you have your, uh, if you're taking notes... Well, you're not doing it in a comp book. Uh, you just need to put this down in some prominent place, like important equation place. Yeah. This is like uber important. Right Write now. it backwards on your forehead so you see it in the mirror every morning. Perfect. What a great idea. I great? like the way you think. Yeah. That's deserving of a whistle. No, no, no. <laughs> Please. No more. Oh, you don't think so? No. Okay. All right. All right. So, um... Uh, so, also, by the way, we can also use a concept of a millimole. Now, what does milli mean, Mr. Sam? Milli means one one thousandth. So if that's the case, a millimole is just a thousandth of a mole, or yep. 0 0.001 moles. Yep. Now, since we work in such small quantities, if I take MV, let's say I have a molar solution that's 2.0 molar, and I've got a 16, no, no, I have 10 milliliters. Yeah. So I can then just say 2 molar times 10 milliliters. Now, I'm not converting to liters, which you're probably thinking that you should do. And, of course, 2 times 10 is 20. 20. I can do that one and in my head. And then we call that millimoles. Yes. You see this milli kind of carries over here. And now we're working with a number of 20, because otherwise, if you kind of do the math, you'd have 0 0.020 moles. And that's just, the, I like to work too with many numbers, zeros. too many zeros, and, and it can create moles, problems. Yeah. And it's much easier 
um, to have less problems. Right. So um, again, the, the capital M stands for yeah. molarity or uh, moles per liter or molar, we, we would say. So in this case, a 2.0 molar solution. There you go. Because actually, let me, let me show you that dim dimensionally. Because if a molar is moles per liter and you times by liters, then you get moles. Liters cancel and you get moles. So or if we do milliliters, the milli kind of hangs out left there. So we could leave the milli yes. and the liters cancel and you still have milli and you still have moles, so you get millimole. There you go. Okay, so now we're going to just do a couple example problems. Very easy things. Okay. You've probably done these before. So if I want to calculate the molarity of a solution prepared by dissolving this many grams of gaseous hydrochloric acid into 26.8 milliliters, I probably should say of water here. We're going to take, watch how I do this. I take 1.56 grams divided by, and I do, if it's molarity, it's moles per liter. Now, I'm going to do this in my head. Maybe I'll, I'll do this this time. If I have um, 26.8 milliliters, I'm going to do it um, dimensionally up here, but I'm going to then from now on do it in my head. I could say there's 1,000 milliliters in one liter. The milliliters cancel, but I can kind of do this in my head, and I'm just going to say 0 0.0268 liters. I can kind of do that in my head. Hopefully, you can get to that stage here. If not, you may need to do this step right here, because that's this number is that 0 0.0268. And then I then need to know, of course, I want I have grams per liter, so I have to say grams per mole. Mm -hmm. The molar mass of uh, HCl is 36.5. Yep. Is that right? Yep. 36.5 grams per mole. Hopefully, I can do my math right this time, course, so we don't grams have a disaster mean, like last. Yeah, that, was, that was not deserving of a whistle, Mr. No, no, it was, it was pretty yes. horrible. Okay, and you come up with a molar solution of 1.59. I think we can keep two, three sig figs. Yeah. And then molar. That's a pretty simple problem. Just get moles per liter. I think you guys are pretty good with that. Okay. Um, here's another one. Um, now, this is asking for volume, though. So if I've got blood serum, it's about 0.14 molar sodium chloride. So I'm going to say, now watch how I do this. I'm going to say 0.14 moles of NaCl per one liter of water, or of solution, actually. Solution is usually abbreviated S-O-L-N. Yep. And I want to convert to what? Grams. Um, no, volume. And I've got one milligram of that. Yeah. Now, I've got moles right here. I might have started with milligrams. See, I would have started with milligrams. I think I should have. Let's I think do that. Let's just start over on a blank screen. So if I have one milligram over one and it's salt and so I'm going to go say that there's a thousand milligrams in one gram and then there is 58.5 mm -hmm. grams of sodium chloride and that's just the molar one mass mole of sodium chloride yeah where did I get these 58.5 it's uh, the molar mass of sodium is 23 chlorine is 35.5 just, just add them together add them together perfect okay and now I can then say that there is it was 0 0.14 yeah. mole moles per one liter and now what's going to happen is the mole here term is going to cancel and I will have liters and the volume is 1.22 times 10 to the minus fourth liters. Now this is a bit of an awkward unit and so if I wanted to convert to milliliters I would times it by a thousand or you can say a thousand milliliters in one liter and that is 0 0.122 milliliters. milliliters. Yep. So that works, yeah. I just, yeah. Notice that um, Mr. Bergman jumped ahead and he got a little weird on that one. Okay, just one more thing. How do you make up a solution? And I think you've done this before. If you did our final projects last mm -hmm. year, but if you're out in regular chemistry land, maybe you don't know how to do this. So we're going to have a conversation about this. Right. Basically, what you're going to do is this is this is called a what? This particular device right here. Oh, uh, that's a volumetric flask. And volumetric flasks measure one volume extremely accurately. Yes, yeah, so like a 100 milliliter volume flask or 250 or something like that. Yep. So you put a particular mass of solid. This would be from a, a scale. You'd have some kind of a scale and yep. you'd measure it out. And then you would then add um, uh, using the wash bottle and you would fill it up to the line. Actually, the, Not quite to the line yet. Actually, an interesting thing. Why do you think Mr. Sam's the only half fill it up? I first? would say fill it up halfway or so and then you're going to just swirl. Because it's a lot easier to swirl that to get your solid to dissolve when it's only half full versus when it's all the way up to the line yeah. there. 
since you're trying to make a solution, you yeah. want to make the solution so that it's uh, it's mixed, it's yeah. dissolved. You want to completely dissolve before you do anything. And then else. they would carefully add water up into this line. Yep. And then they could figure out its molarity because they know a mass. It's just like that problem we did a minute ago. Yep. A mass and a volume, and they could solve it. Yep. It's very very simple. Now, if you didn't want to start with a solid amount, but you had a stock solution, and the stock yeah, solution two down here. Yep. Yep. Is a just a really concentrated aqueous solution. Notice how it's nice and dark green there. You could do the same thing. You would put that into a little bit of water in the bottom of a flask. Now, the reason there's a little bit of water in the bottom of that flask is if your concentrated solution is a concentrated acid, we always add acid. Put the acid into the water. It's that wrong. way it doesn't blow up in your face. Like safety first. That happened to me. So if you're in my class and we do the safety discussion, I get to tell you all about my story when the acid blew up in my face when I was in college, and that's why there's some spots that don't grow hair on my chin. Oh, I see. Yeah. I can tell you about the story of the guys with the hydrochloric acid and the or no, sulfuric acid in the toilet. Oh, in the that dormitory. sounds fun. It was not fun. No. I had to go upstairs for the restroom for months. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay. So then he fills it up, adds the green, and then he fills it up. Looks like this is a particular 500 milliliter volumetric yep. flask. Just to the mark. And they fill it exactly the mark. If you go over the mark, what do you have to do, Mr. Sanders? you got to start over, so yeah, do totally not go over the mark. no fun Because you can't all. just pour it out because you're not pouring out and just water. of course, water. I have these pictures. Too. You're pouring them out. Yeah. Here they are again, solution. and I yeah. should have been marking um, these One up. thing we didn't talk about, Mr. Bergman, is M1V1 equals M2V2 yeah, for these concentrated. Yeah, so you know, in our little notes, we're going to add something here, ladies and gentlemen. M1V1 equals M2V2. This is called the... That's the dilution equation. The dilution equation. Dilution solution. So if you want to take a, 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 a wash bottle, let's say I... Or not a wash bottle, pardon me, a, a stock solution. So this would be a solution filled with some particular chemical. We'll call it the green chemical, maybe nickel or something like that. And we know its molarity is uh, 6.10 molar. And I'm going to then take it and put it into another volumetric flask. And um, I want to make up a uh, 1.4 molar solution. How would I make that up, Mr. Uh, well, let's oh, figure out green stuff, and it would be a lighter green. How much of our final solution do we need? Oh, yeah, Mr. we probably need, you know, let's say that this is a 250 milliliter volumetric flask. Which is kind All of right. It's very so, accurate. So we want 250 milliliters of our 1.4 molar solution. We're going to make it from a 6.1 molar solution. Well, I'm going to use M1V1 equals M2V2. And I'm going to solve for V1 to determine how much of the stock solution I need to suck out to do this. So I'm plugging in the numbers as I do this here. Mm-hmm. And I, so am I. Into the calculator. Mr. Sam is doing the calculator job. I'm doing the writing piece. I'm not sure that's a good idea given last time, but... Okay, then we okay divide both sides, of course, by 6.1, yep. and we get a volume... Um, to be what? Uh, I've got 57 point... Uh, how many sig figs do we want? Looks like two sig figs, 57 milliliters. So now, what does that number mean, Mr. Sams? What do you do with that? Well, that's the amount that I'm going to take out of our stock solution and put into the volumetric flask, put a little water in there, swirl it around, and fill it up to the 250 line. That'd be about like about 200 milliliters, maybe 100, you know, 90 something. Well, milliliters. I wouldn't measure it out. I oh, would just yeah. fill it up to the line because when you add liquids together, the volumes are not always additive. That's true. So what you do is you just fill yeah. it up to the line. Probably again, fill it up halfway, shake, 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 and then fill it up the rest of the way. Yep. And that's how you uh, would make this uh, solution. And then now you have a particular molarity of 1.4 molar of some compound, say a nickel chloride or something like that. I think that's got a chloride, uh, a green color. Yep. So this is called a dilution, and then we could actually dilute this again. This dilute. This could become the new stock mm -hmm. solution, and then this 1.4 becomes the new M1. And this is when we put these together, we call that a what? A cereal dilution. Cereal. Doesn't that mean something else? Um, it's the stuff I eat in the morning. But no, it's spelled differently, isn't it, Mr. Sanders? Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, this is like a cereal, like a cereal killer. What does a cereal killer do? It does the same thing over and over. Yeah, they kill it again and, and again and again. And so if you do a cereal dilution, you would dilute again and again and again. Yep. Do you know that I'm related to Lizzie Borden? Really? She had an axe. Yes, and she killed her. Gave her mother forty wax. With forty wax, yeah. yeah. So that might scare you. I don't know. Yeah, I'm a little frightened. I think I'm gonna go home now. She's like my great great aunt or something. Really? Like that. Yeah. So. Crazy. But you know, who my great great uncle was. Who's that? A guy named Winston. Um, I believe his last name was Churchill. Churchill. Oh, yeah. and actually, they're in the same yeah. family, so I don't know. Oh, that's bizarre. greatness, and uh, yeah, they're all. He's like my great 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 uncle, and this is my great 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 aunt. I don't know how that worked out. Crazy, different crazy. branches. Crazy. Different. Yes, one's crazy, and one's like a hero of the world. Winston. Yeah. I didn't spell his name. Winston C. There you yeah. go. Well, folks, that's that's it for podcast yeah. three point one. We are uh, on Cyber. Oh, wait, I, I've been working on this. Oh, great. Is that an actual song? Of 
course it is. It's some kind of marching song. Really? Oh, could have fooled me. All right. Mr. Bergman's not going to quit his day job. We'll see you in class. Bye, guys. <laughs>